Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling in Zimbi Lore. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to continue to continue to talk about the Zim Neo Mini site and dig into some of the code there. This can be found at zimjs.com, and then we press on the Zim Neo logo up top or find it in the examples. Come into the mini site. We've talked about the path orient flip speed. And in the last one, we took a look at controls. Let's now have a look at what's extra. Extra, I think, could be one of the most important things uh, that we've launched. The dynamic animation, being able to dynamically animate along a path and various things there. Any animation is also cool. So in the extra, we are changing things, changing properties based on other properties while we animate. So we're using the animation to change other things. In this case, as we animate, we are changing the depth, uh, appearance anyway, um, of that because we're changing the scale. So as it goes along that path, it's big. And then as it goes farther up, uh, in the, we're using the Y position of what we're animating to change the scale and the alpha. It goes a little bit transparent back there, and now it's not transparent. Uh, and also the, the layer. So we just went through that misty cloud bit. Watch this. Whoop. There we go. So based on the Y, we're also changing the layer. And this is dynamic. So if I move things around, get that. If I move this around, so there's way the heck up there. That's big, big in the front there. Whoop. Oh, and the speed. The speed of it is changing, and that's important as well. We're actually changing the speed of the object. So it's faster in the front, and then it slows down as it gets farther. Hopefully that comes close to looking like it's going the same speed everywhere. If you remove that, this looks completely different. It, it just goes whoosh, 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 and it just doesn't look as natural. So these are the extra things. Let's go in and dig uh, dig into the code. Once once again, did you catch that that is, is totally dynamic in that we can do that and watch. Now it's just that it is that little one going along there. And since it's way in the distance, that helps you sort of judge what's going on. Here it is fast at the front. And as it goes into the back, now animating along, it looks like it's going slower because it has to travel farther in the back to be able to go that distance. And now it comes up fast to the front. All right, let's close that down, cladunk, and dig into the code of Zimneo Extra, exclamation mark. And we're using Zim9. We have some data that we recorded that makes that path that look like an M. And we're passing that data into the points parameter of the squiggle to make that path. This was some of the stuff that we were doing when we were making that, the, we were recording, um, so forth. That's a fast way to record. We remember it. And then after we bring back what we remembered, we just, we run the record. And um, so you make changes you refresh the page, and when you refresh the page, it will pop up the record of what those changes were, rather than make a button that does record. Anyway, on we go. Here we have the mist. This is a blob with a bunch of points. We did the recording of that in a similar way. We're not letting that be brought up to the top and so forth. And we've got mist one is this point. This, we're going into the mist objects and grabbing the first point circle and the second points. Oh, sorry, not circle. That's zero, not one. The first points controls. So this is the whole control and the some other point in there, the fourth point, its control. And we're wiggling those with rotation. So we're wiggling those two control points 10 to 20. If we said 10 to 200, this, oops, not 2000, this would look a lot different. Open in browser. You see how now that's turned it into a whale. So those control points, too bad we can't, well, we can see the control points. If we say show control points and not allow toggling, 
it looks like these are the two control points right here that are being winged around. Wow, 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 wow. That are animating that blob. But that's another matter. By the way, in animating a blob or a squiggle, remember that this thing is a squiggle, you can animate along paths that are animated and it will work. So you could animate this path or we could animate something around this blob and as this blob is being animated it would still follow that animated path. That gives you complete sort of a free looking moving morphing blobular animation path following. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will turn that off. We will not animate quite as much. In other words, why don't we undo? Oh, and redo the person, the uh, exclamation mark. All right, we've made blob. We weren't really wanting to talk about that anyway. We are updating, by the way, when you do a wiggle and you change a blob, we're changing the rotation of something in the blob. You have to manually update the mist in a ticker or something like that. So just wiggling a point of the blob will not automatically update the blob. You uh, need to call the update on it. Right, we got some colors. Why do we have colors? Oh, each time it stops, it uh, changes color. We're animating along a path, orientation, orient false. If we orient it true, it would look like this. This is path animation stuff. Refresh here. Oh, that doesn't look like it's orienting along the path at all. Orient true, props, what are we on? The rect, zoom speed. Oh, <laughs> that's because we got two of them in here. Oh, what the heck is this? This one would be overridden now. We <laughs> must have been left for some other reason. I don't know why. So we'll change that back to an orient. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Wait a minute, why is orient broken? Uh, that was looked at for some other reason. Yeah, okay. So we'll <laughs> set that to true. Here, who would have thunk? And now we've got this box. We uh, orienting itself along the path in, in some regard. <laughs> There it is. And there's the color changing. So each time it loops or ends, it, um, it comes back there. I don't know why it kind of looks like a drunken box, doesn't it? If this were going straight up, which we can make it do, then there you can see it's going straight up along the path. And now it's trying to move itself to go in there. Alrighty. Oh, whatever. Uh, orient false. By the way, as soon as you animate along a path, by default, it tries to orient to that path. So if you don't want that, set it to false. And now we move in to Zim Animate Extra. Extra comes with a bunch of convenience properties. Here they are, zoom, speed, layer, and fade. But you can also do Animate Extra with the extra properties. We don't have to do these guys at all. When we do animate, we can say uh, these things about it, but that perhaps is getting ahead of ourselves. We'll go in and take a look at that in just a second. Let's see the uh, the made ones. Zoom true will, it's, it's basically animating the scale. So it's true, it's a shortcut for uh, zero one. So zim zero comma one, would start off at the top of the screen, it would have a zero scale, and at the um, bottom of the screen, it would have a one scale. So if you were to bring this animation right up to the top of the screen, zero, we can't even see it there. And then <laughs> at some point, where the, where the heck did it go? <laughs> we lost it. <laughs> Oopsies. You know what? Maybe if it has a scale of zero, uh, we lose it. So perhaps we better not have a scale of zero. There it is small, and it works just fine. 
Sometimes zero objects are in trouble. Here it goes. Oh, there it is. Oh, not quite zero. It looks like when it's not there, it's gone. I'll put that right up to the top and let's see what happens the next time. Glitch. We better uh, not make it animate to zero. Go on, get moving. There it is going small. Nothing like a, a live bug. And gone. Forever. <laughs> it's just gone to meet its maker. Oh, node zero. There you go. You're gone into the void of chaos. <laughs> Oopsies. Anyway, so you, you don't want to do that. Interesting. Interesting. Huh. Wonder why that happened. Uh, I'll scribble down a little. Hey, warning. Let's figure out why if it goes to zero, it's gone. Anyway, if you want to just use the default, you can say true. So that's a fast way of using the default for the scale. Speed. Speed, we're saying start uh, at 20, and that would be up at the top. So go 20% speed at the very top of the screen, and go 100% speed at the bottom of the screen. And that happens to be short for, well, this one is also short for something else. You can pass in four things here. You can pass in the beginning, the end, and at what location, and what uh, what start location, and what end location. This is clamped, by the way. So if you say at half, at 50%, oh no, that's only 50 pixels, at uh, 300 pixels, 300 pixels in the Y, well, we better do it over here. How can that come back here? Go 20% speed at 300 pixels in the Y. Go 100% speed at the stage height. And uh, maybe we'll reduce that a little bit. Why don't we go 600? So now this range will only happen in between 300 and 600. So at a height between 300 and 600 pixels, it will go uh, 20. Anything un or anything above, so above 300 pixels to zero, will still be 20. Anything below 600 will still be 100%. But in between here, we'll see a rapid speed change. So we refresh here. I don't quite know where that rapid speed change is taking place. <laughs> Can you tell? I can't quite tell. That presumably is 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. And then it gets faster. Yeah, I saw it there. So somewhere around the middle, it was fast, and now it's slow. So it's clamped, which means, but you can unclamp that. You can unclamp it down when you when you use this one. There's the factor and output round. Thought there was a clamp. Oh, maybe there is no unclamp. I don't know. Anyway, that's clamped. So that's the speed. We'll undo that. Uh, maybe that's what we had before. Hopefully. Layer is another thing. So we're saying go from layer one to layer two. Right now, if you take a look at it, the we have some data, we have a path. So we have a squiggle, although it's a straight squiggle, that's our path, that's at layer zero. Then we have the blob, that's at layer one. And then we've got this thing that we're animating, which is the rect, which would be at layer two. So we want to go Layer 1 would put it on the other side of the mist. So layer 1, if we're at stage height minus 150, then we'll be in layer 1. So stage height minus 150 to the stage height, we're going from layer 1 to layer 2. Uh, I guess that is saying stage height minus 150. Um, when it's this position, swap on over to be in front. And there's the swap, but it looks like it's on a different uh, Y position, stage height minus 150. Not sure what, oh, but remember that's a percentage. So it just happened to be the percentage that worked out better. I have another example where we've really, the parallax example that's coming up, we really lock in 
where you are moving to different because we're trying to move something to go behind a tree and in front of a tree and it's a very small y difference right now we've got a fairly large y difference from zero to just underneath and all we did was move this a little bit until it, it swapped the layers for us. We could be more precise and find out the specific height where we want to swap these layers. This is made for, it's sort of neat, if we had a bunch of things we could, right now we've only got the mist there, but if we had a bunch of things then we can really move in and out of um, in front and behind. We perfected this inside of uh, this Zim example, we'll pop on out to it under examples. It started here, and in, in particular this one, where we were taking this, and that's in front, but if we go behind it in height, if we move to the height, it then goes behind. So this is the type of thing that we're doing now in our animation. Let's move these to here. We're doing this in our animation. We're automatically doing that depth swapping for you as it animates. And the animation can be anywhere. It can be a squiggle like this and all of a sudden. So when we're animating around a tree, uh, we've got a small path and we need to go in front of it and behind it. In front. And this is doing depth. You see how that's bigger to smaller way up here. So we're doing all of this now in animation with Zim Extra. All right, that's the layer stuff and the fade is the alpha. So doing something similar with an alpha. If we set this to zero, we could make it start to look like it's completely going. You know, doop, doop, doop. No. Doop, doop. And did that refresh? I don't know. Refresh. So now we, we're starting to hardly see it. And as it moves up towards the very top here, it's really starting to fade out. And as we bring it up, the alpha brings it up so we can see it. Neat, huh? Gone in the mist. And if that's moving too fast back there for you, you can still drop the speed. So there's the speed. We could say zero. And you may like that better. We tweaked this a little bit and made it so that we thought it was good. There it is moving slower at the back, coming faster to the front. As it goes back there, you can see that it's really taking its time and then coming forward. Once again, that's dynamic, so we can change this path and it will be all right. Pick that up. So now it moves slowly all across the pack. And this works fine. Double click these things, double click and pull this kind of maneuver. Slowly going along the path at the back. Uh, come back to me, little box. Don't go into the void. Yes! And then it whips up. Oh, it's because we got slow stuff going on and fast stuff on the front. It seems like that when we went to a speed of 0 and 100. All right, great. So let's move along here. We will comment out these. Doop and bring the same thing done with generic extra. We'll just quickly go through, I won't say the word just, we'll go through these <laughs> quickly. Extra. We can do one extra thing at a time. If we only wanted to do this bit of extra stuff, then we would put in the squiggly brackets, the object literal only. But if we want to do multiple extra things, then we can add the array. I could take you through these, and I should take you through these, but maybe before, let's just see what the power of extra is. Obviously, if I show you the same things again, you're going, oh, why did we bother using extra? Um, somebody had asked me on Slack, said, hey, that's great, but if you could only animate the whole stage so the stage follows the rectangle or, or zooms in on the rectangle when the rectangle's far away and, and comes back. And went, yes, that is what extra is for. So here we have the same code, but what we've done is we've just dropped down 
uh, what we've done is we have dropped down into extra and we said the output object. So uh, this will receive what we're changing and the stage is going to re receive a change of scale from 0.6 to 1.5 based on by default based on the Y position of what we're animating. So based on the Y position of our box that we're animating, of our rect that we're animating. We didn't put those in there, but we could. That would be input min. Well, first of all, we would have to say what our input is, and that would be input prop colon the Y, like so. Input min colon the uh, zero comma <laughs> I haven't typed in a while. It, I feel a little bit clunky. Input max colon stage height. All of that is default. It assumes you're dealing with Y. It assumes you're going from zero to the stage height. So we don't need any of it. Oh, there would be a comma there as well. We don't need that. Factor means reverse it. So by adding this extra bit of animation where we're animating the stage, based on something, based on our animation, our current animation. And watch what happens. So we refresh, oh, we open this up, open in browser. And now as that moves back, we're changing the scale of the stage to sort of zoom in on that. Now I didn't change the position. But there we go. And look at that. As it's farther back, that whole the whole stage has scaled back. So um, closer to the bottom here, on the higher number of y, we are making the scale of the stage smaller. So there's a higher value of y, small scale. If the the value goes back towards zero, then we make we zoom in, we make the stage bigger. So that is why we've added a negative one there because it's the opposite factor. Down below is us trying out to see if we can make it make the stage follow the x position. Of the of the y and the x and indeed we can so this is the power of extra extra allows you to animate any other object any other objects property based on a property that is being animated so we've got this rectangle being animated uh, if it's got a rotation of this we could animate the rotation of a mouth of some other object or we could animate the scale of some other object. It also flips the other way. We can animate, we can change any property of what we're animating to match a property of something else. So it works both ways. In other words, the answer here, what Extra is doing, is allowing you to animate any object's property, any property of any object, based on any property of any object. <laughs> Wow, and that's all tied in with um, with Zim Animate. Neato mosquito. Uh, now, just looking at the the sort of the functionality here of Extra, uh, here is an example that has all of the oops, all of the things that are available. Multi-line comment here. We can specify an input object. In this case, it's the target. Target is the default. An input property, y. Y is the default. An input min of zero, that's the default. An input max of the stage height is the default. What our output object is, what are we wanting to change based on the values of these things? The default is the target as well, because often we're doing that with Zim. We want, or with Zoom, sorry, we want to change the uh, scale, the scale of something. That's also a default based on the Y position of itself. So in both cases, the target, and then the output uh, mins and output maxes, a factor, and whether we want that to be rounded to numbers so that we could control things like. No frames in a sprite or something like that. What this really is, is Zim proportion. Uh, and actually proportion damp because, well, we probably don't have to damp this because the motion of the animation is usually damped. Anyway, this is Zim proportion. 
and that's a class that maps one thing to another. And we're turning that on here in an array format so that we can map a whole bunch of different things uh, based on this animation. Neat. We did this as well. Uh, can you think of another time when this might be useful? The answer is... I can't even see how to get back. <laughs> By the way, all that's interactive. You could drag that and and it would start zooming in on what you're dragging and not. So remember how we're dragging along a path at times? Oh, well, we haven't seen that yet. Dragging's coming up. You know, we're just an extra. But parallax. Parallax, this motion that we're seeing here, and we're going to take a look at this when there's that animating around the tree and the depth. But parallax itself, moving things in, in different directions, is also a matter of proportion. Based on where the mouse is along the X, we're moving these in different amounts, or where it is on the Y, or freeform. So parallax is already just a system that takes these proportion things and organizes them all into one kind of thing, well, you know, one parallax object that you can add layers. Really, you're just adding uh, Zim proportions to that, proportion damps in this case. So that's what parallax is. And now we've added that whole system into uh, the animation as well, and called that Zim Extra. Wow! So uh, back here, we were taking a look at Extra. Parallax, and I think maybe even Drag, both use Extra as well. Both use that. Uh, if we take a quick peek at Drag, you see how this is getting bigger as it comes forward. That is also looking at it. So we'll get another chance to see it when we look into the next bubbling here at uh, What's Bubbling a Zim? I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and hopefully that was a fun tour of um, well, just something that opens up animation and controls to uh, the infinite, in a sense, here at Zim. Come on by, zimjs.com. Come on in and talk to us, zimjs.com slash slack. A whole bunch of really nice people all chatting. Slack uh, is, is free, fun. You should learn how to use Slack if you haven't yet. It's a community, uh, but more like an intranet. <laughs> we used to call them intranets. Uh, an internal forum uh, for, in this case, talking about Zim and coding interactivity with the JavaScript canvas. Ciao. Have a great day or night. Bye.